The year was 1973, a time when adventure and exploration gripped the hearts of enthusiasts, drawing them to the remote landscapes of Mount Gambier, Australia. The focal point of our aspirations was the shaft, a sinkhole that beckoned with the promise of unveiling its secrets to those daring enough to traverse its enigmatic depths. Little did we know that this expedition would evolve into a harrowing tale etched in the annals of cave diving history. Mount Gambier, with its limestone topography and crystal blue lakes, served as the backdrop for our audacious venture. Thompson's Paddock, a modest tract of land nestled between the city and the southern coast, concealed the entrance to the shaft, a geological marvel that had intrigued explorers since its discovery in 1938. What started as a mere hole in the ground had transformed into an underwater cavern of colossal proportions, capturing the imagination of divers from around the world. The mid-60s witnessed the first intrepid diver descending into the shaft, unveiling a breathtaking chamber illuminated by a radiant beam of sunlight. This natural spectacle bestowed the cave with its name, the shaft, paying homage to the awe-inspiring phenomenon that greeted divers as they ventured deeper into its embrace. By May of 1973, the allure of this subterranean wonder beckoned our team, a group of nine divers, a mix of seasoned instructors and eager enthusiasts, to attempt a daring dive to the perimeter at 250 feet of depth. The preparations for our journey mirrored the anticipation that coursed through our veins, the entrance to the shaft with its narrow confines necessitated the setup of an intricate tripod hoist system, a testament to the technical challenges that lay ahead. Unbeknownst to us, the adventure would unravel into a tragic saga marked by inadequate cave diving knowledge, unconventional safety protocols, and the absence of specialized equipment. At approximately 180 feet into the descent, the underwater world surrounding me transformed into a mysterious abyss the depths of the shaft revealing its enigmatic allure. The pressure intensified, and the gas mixture I depended on for survival began to weave its disorienting dance into my senses, the telltale effects of nitrogen narcosis, a narcotic induced by the depth and gas composition, whispered through the water, blurring the fine line between caution and peril. Recognizing the early signs of this underwater intoxication, I had to make a critical decision. My hand signaled the ascent, a seemingly routine maneuver for seasoned divers, yet a choice that, unbeknownst to me, marked the genesis of a chilling tragedy. As I emerged into the dim light that filtered through the watery depths, a chilling realization unfolded. Three fellow divers materialized beside me, their faces etched with confusion and dread. At that moment, the weight of the void below struck us, an unforgiving reminder that four members, including Glenn's brother and sister, were still ensnared in the shadowed embrace of the shaft. The remaining group, now diminished to five divers, faced a realm where clouds of sediment obscured the once penetrating light, and the water, once clear, became an opaque tapestry of uncertainty. Christine Gordon and Larry, now disoriented and grappling with dwindling air supplies, confronted a maze of rocky terrain and underwater passages. The disorienting dance of shadows and distorted reflections on the cave ceiling further befuddled their senses. In a desperate bid for escape, they mistook a mere mirage for the elusive exit, a mirage that taunted them from the ceiling like a cruel specter of false hope. Panic, an invisible force, gripped our group as we grappled with the terrifying reality that our comrades were missing, swallowed by the labyrinthine depths. Glenn, fueled by a desperation that only a sibling's love could ignite, made the courageous decision to plunge back into the shaft for his mission to locate and rescue his brother and sister from the clutches of the abyss. Yet, as he descended into the murky abyss, the silted-out conditions conspired against him. The impenetrable darkness became a new yielding barrier, thwarting his valiant efforts to reunite with his kin. He resurfaced the weight of the darkness haunting his every breath, an empty-handed witness to the merciless grip that had swallowed his siblings whole. Days transformed into a relentless cycle of uncertainty and despair as rescue teams descended upon Mount Gambier. The underwater chamber, once a canvas for exploration, now harbored the chilling reality of a grim search for the lost. The discovery of Stephen's lifeless body airily suspended from the cave ceiling marked the inception of a somber period.
Further searches revealed Christine, Gordon, and John each frozen in the final moments of their ill-fated dive, frozen in the embrace of the abyss that claimed them. The Mount Gambier community, shaken to its core by the Shaft disaster, responded with urgency and resolve. The tragedy ignited the birth of the Cave Divers Association of Australia, CDAA, an organization forged in the crucible of loss dedicated to ensuring that such harrowing tales would not be etched into the future of cave exploration. The incident underscored the imperative for stringent regulation and safety standards in cave diving, a stark lesson etched in the collective memory of the diving community. In hindsight, the ill-fated dive into the shaft unfurled as a tragic tapestry woven with threads of inexperience, outdated safety protocols, and the haunting absence of proper equipment. Our quest for exploration had inadvertently led us into a perilous dance with the unknown. The aftermath of the shaft disaster became a catalyst for transformative change within the realm of cave dive. Organizations like the CDA emerged, armed with a commitment to rewriting the narrative of exploration, infusing it with wisdom, preparedness, and an unwavering dedication to the sanctity of life beneath the Earth's surface. The legacy of the Shaft disaster transcends the boundaries of time, resonating as a cautionary anthem for explorers. It is a haunting reminder that the pursuit of the unknown demands not just courage, but also a profound respect for the volatile landscapes that lie beneath our feet. The CDA and its counterparts now stand as guardians, their watchful eyes ensuring that future generations of cave divers navigate the subterranean realms with the wisdom earned from the tragic echoes of our ill-fated expedition into the Shaft. The narrative of the Shaft disaster serves as a cautionary tale, a somber reminder that the pursuit of adventure should always be tempered with a vigilant commitment to safety. The tragedy prompted introspection, fostering a collective determination to turn a devastating episode into a catalyst for positive change within the cave diving community. As we reflect on that ill-fated expedition, we honor the memories of those lost by striving to create a safer and more responsible environment for future cave explorers. The depths of the shaft, once an alluring mystery, now stand as a solemn testament to the profound impact that a single journey into the unknown can have on an entire community. The yearning for exploration and discovery inherent in the human spirit often dances at the edge of deep. The shaft disaster reminds us that the call of the unknown should be answered with caution, respect, and an unwavering commitment to the safety of all who dare to tread in the footsteps of pioneers. May the lessons learned from this tragedy guide future adventurers toward a path marked by preparedness, knowledge, and an unyielding dedication to the sanctity of life amid the shadows of the Earth's hidden realm.